lightning was a chosen weapon of the gods. Lightning and thunder were serious acts of God to be feared by everyone. Electricity was this magical, mysterious force. People were terrified of it, terrified of it, terrified of it. Only Franklin could withstand God's power of lightning. This was a very dangerous experiment. It's part of what is the myth of the man. And the best known science experiment of all time. My take is it didn't happen, it didn't happen, it didn't happen. He was very capable of the, that kind of hope. He was the luckiest scientist in history. This was like astounding stuff. It was almost like the, that was like the beginning of the modern age. He was a pop star. His face was more famous than the man in the moon. With a flash of lightning, Ben Franklin became immortal. Poets and artists have attempted to capture the moment. Ben Franklin, in brilliant defiance of nature, using only a kite and a key, steals lightning from the sky. Hi, I'm Larry Menti, in Franklin Court in Philadelphia, walking the same steps that Ben Franklin walked before this country was even born. How did eternal fame find a man of such humble beginnings? He was just another teenage runaway when he left his home in Boston and arrived in Philadelphia in 1723. But that started him down a remarkable cobblestone path into history. In 1728, Ben Franklin would open a printing office on Market Street and become the most prolific writer in the New World. The source of Franklin's popularity were his popular writings. Franklin was uh, well known throughout the colonies for his wonderful political satire, political humor. For two decades, Franklin wrote, printed, and published the Pennsylvania Gazette and the Poor Richard's Almanac, filling it with his timeless wit and wisdom. Time is money. Haste makes waste. When in doubt, don't. In this world, nothing is certain except death and taxes. Ben Franklin is the founder who kind of winks at us from history's stage. All the other founders are a little bit intimidating. He that lieth down with dogs shall rise up with fleas. She laughs at everything you say. Why? Because she has fine teeth. So he had this great sense of humor. Uh, he, he, was just a, he would just have been a fun person to be around. If you had to think of which one to invite to dinner, I think you, you couldn't go wrong inviting Ben Franklin. Guests like fish begin to smell after three days. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Here is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. I would sort of think of him as being the Andy Rooney of his day. Franklin's humor and his practical inventions like the Franklin stove, which made home heating safer and more efficient, the catheter, which he invented to help treat his sick brother, and the odometer and bifocals all made Franklin very popular. I would say he's, you know, the father of American invention. And, you know, even more to the point that uh, some of his stuff remains important today. When Franklin established the first library, the first post office, and the first university in America, it made him prominent. But lightning made him a legend. This incredible, almost superhuman individual who could challenge God. To truly understand the significance of Ben Franklin's work with lightning, you have to take yourself back to the early 1700s with a lightning storm flashing on the horizon. Lightning and thunder historically were, of course, the most like awesome power on earth and people were terrified of it. People were so terribly fearful because lightning could cause fires. When a house was hit by lightning, there weren't the resources for people to come together to put the fire out. Every lightning storm carried with it the awful possibility that your home, your belongings, your family could be destroyed in a split second. Loss of property, loss of life, big problem, totally unpredictable. As the publisher of the most popular newspaper in the colonies, Ben Franklin was sent the details of each and every lightning fire and was moved to do something about it. 
he and other prominent Philadelphians started the first ever volunteer fire department. They had pumpers, but they didn't have enough people to fill the engine. So he came up with the idea of a group of people banding together to form bucket brigades so they could get the water into the pumper. But Franklin's interest in the power of lightning didn't stop there. Franklin was fascinated by research being done in Europe with something called electricity. Electricity was the hot thing to study at the time. People brought him uh, experimental devices to play with because they knew that he was a curious individual. But Franklin took a real liking to electricity. It really is sort of like a party trick. Really, that's what it, nobody really was sure what it was, but they knew that it could be a lot of fun. This is one of his more fun things that he did, and uh, he used an apparatus that was very similar to this. Franklin would turn a crank, creating static electricity inside a glass sphere. The electricity would travel down a chain to a plate, making small items jump up and down. This amazed people because they had never, ever seen anything like this before. He had a similar friction device that would ring bells, but these tricks were child's play compared to some of the things that went on at the electricity parties at Franklin's home, where he would use a little jolt for some adult entertainment. A Franklin favorite was a little trick called the electric Venus. You would electrify a pretty young woman and then invite men to come up and receive a kiss from her. Of course, it was like you sort of jar your dental work. As you can see, there wasn't a whole lot of serious science going on at the time, and that frustrated Franklin, who knew there must be a practical application for electricity. And at one point, uh, he said, the only practical use we found is that it makes a vain man humble. Franklin was not only humbled, he was nearly killed when he gathered friends to watch as he used electricity to slaughter a turkey for a Christmas feast. He got up and smiled at his friends and said, I was trying to kill a turkey and I almost cooked a goose, <laughs> meaning he'd made a a mistake. But after dinner, Franklin proclaimed the turkey experiment a success. And he said it was uncommonly tender, so we Southerners like to think he's the inventor of the first fried turkey. Although this early work with electricity may sound frivolous, it wasn't to Franklin. In 1748, he sold his print shop to spend more time with science. He would keep detailed notes of his experiments, and he would study the findings of others working with electricity, until one day, he solved nature's great puzzle. As a result, Franklin came out with what we now have as this understanding of the fluid nature of electricity, the idea that it flows from one place to another, the idea that it has positive and negative charges, it can be stored, and it can be transferred. In fact, his uh, theory about the flow of electricity is the most important scientific theory of that era. But Franklin didn't know what he had done until he put all his findings into a book simply titled Experiments and Observations on Electricity. It was published in London in 1751 and stunned Europe's great thinkers. It turned out that Franklin had been way ahead himself of the European academics. What made Franklin unique is that he wasn't of that group. He wasn't trained in the academy as a natural philosopher or a scientist, as we say today. But Franklin was also meddling in an area where he wasn't welcome, the sky. That was God's territory. Franklin's work with lightning and thunder was a really daring thing for him to do because at that time, the idea of doing anything against God was certainly blasphemous. Religion ruled over reason in Europe, and the prevailing theory was that if lightning destroyed your home, it was God's wrath. People largely just simply believed that lightning was a chosen weapon of the gods, that this was a form of retribution. When their house was struck by lightning, it was something that God had done. But it was Franklin that noticed that lightning looked a lot like the sparks that he created with his static electricity machines. He said lightning is, in fact, a large spark. That really changed not only how people did science, but it also changed how people felt about the world. To prove his theory, Franklin came up with an experiment called the Sentry Box. It consisted of a 40-foot iron beam and a box to stand in and collect electrical charges from the sky. 
the French constructed a sentry box, and on May 10, 1752, as a thunderstorm approached, Sparks danced above the head of an old soldier inside the box. This proved once and for all that lightning was in fact electricity. Almost overnight, they were chanting Franklin's name on the streets of Paris. Let's raise a glass and then sing the praises of our Ben. Raise, raise a glass and then sing the praises of our Ben. This discovery about Franklin just shot his popularity right through the roof, as you could say, in France, and made him one of the most popular people of his time. They're amazed. It's called the Philadelphia Experiment, or the Franklin Experiment, because everybody knew it was his experiment. I think they just love the idea of this sort of rustic Franklin who had come up with this theory that basically dethroned God as the kind of... Uh, and, you know, remember, too, at that time that, you know, the people who led Europe the, the royalty were divinely appointed. So anything that kind of like unseated, you know, God's authority was sort of like a breath of, real breath of fresh air to them. But Franklin's duel with nature's weapons wasn't quite finished. In the October 1752 edition of the Pennsylvania Gazette, he announced that he had successfully conducted the famous kite experiment and that he had invented something called a lightning rod. In my mind, the lightning rod is one of the most important inventions in history. Once Franklin understood that lightning was electricity, he knew he could control it. Remember the chain on the static electricity machine? Franklin used something similar to send lightning safely from the highest point on a house to the ground. If the lightning were to strike a building that wasn't grounded, it would burst into flames. And so it's, it's saved countless numbers of lives. His fame grew even greater as lightning rods protected homes and churches from a wrathful sky all around the world. It was like a liberating idea. The idea that not only was there was no God, there, there were no goblins or devils or gods sending these things down, it was natural. And not only that, man could control it. This was like astounding stuff. It was almost like, the, that was like the beginning of the modern age. At about this time, a storm that not even Franklin could control was stirring in the colonies. A storm of discontent fueled by whispers of independence. Whispers that grew into a declaration of independence in 1776. A declaration that would bring war. It may have been the biggest upset in history. The fact that the Americans won the Revolutionary War was considered by the Americans themselves to be this incredible, like a miracle. The Americans were taking on the world's most feared army. They were outmanned and outgunned. But their secret weapon was one of the men who shaped and signed the Declaration of Independence. Sure. I heard he was harnessing electricity as a weapon against the British. Oh, yes. The British regulars were petrified as rumors made it through the ranks that Benjamin Franklin used electricity to make the first weapon of mass destruction. And that he was going to blow England off the map, whatever, right? People thought he was a wizard. They were afraid of him. But the real source of Franklin's power was his fame. He was sent to France to ask for troops, guns, and money. He wore fur to play the role of the rustic rebel. Parisians ate it up. He was such a celebrity that literally people would stand on the street corners waiting for this man in his famous fur coat to walk down the street. And, you know, he wrote to his daughter, he said, I'm more famous than the man on the moon over here. You know, with all due respect to Jerry Lewis, he's the most famous American ever to go to Paris. So the fact that he was so famous made the doors open to him, and he was successful in securing the support of the king, which led to money, arms, and soldiers. The French had almost as many troops at Yorktown, the conclusive battle, as, um, as George Washington had American troops. So I think it would have turned out quite differently if Franklin hadn't been able to bring France in on our side. We would never have won the American Revolution. The fame that brought a country freedom is celebrated brilliantly by Benjamin West's romantic portrayal of Franklin's kite experiment. Maybe even the best known science experiment of all time. It may be the most famous experiment that never happened. We don't have any wind, but we're going to go. Tom Tucker, a professor and author in North Carolina, has tried to fly a kite made to Franklin's exact specifications 
countless times in all kinds of weather with the exact same result. Franklin's account really is written for couch potatoes. And when you start doing it, the problems begin to arise. Tucker spent four years researching Franklin's writings and letters about the experiment and came to the conclusion that not only doesn't the kite fly, the whole story doesn't fly. And I'm not saying for sure he didn't do it, but I'm saying when you start looking like at this, it's unlikely. And he is not alone in that thinking. Two, one. Tucker asked aerodynamic experts at NASA to check the feasibility of the experiment. They reported back that it's possible, but very dangerous. Whether you'd want to try this at home, I don't think so, because nine times out of ten, you'd probably end up fried. If it happened right the first time, and he only did it once, he was the luckiest scientist in history. Historians have found no detailed notes about the kite experiment. Franklin wrote only one brief description in the Pennsylvania Gazette after he learned about the success of the sentry box experiment in France. He wrote, The same experiment has succeeded in Philadelphia, though made in a different and more easy manner. There was little detail in the short account. No place, no time, no mention of a witness. Fifteen years later, Franklin would tell a biographer that his son William was there with him. But William then kept silent about the experiment for the rest of his life. These and other vagaries shroud a legendary moment in mystery. I think I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt that if he says he flew the kite, or if he led others to believe he did, I'm willing to assume that he probably did. He probably tried this a number of times before, didn't want to admit the failures. It may have happened a number of times after that, and what he did was to collapse all of those tries into this one story. The kite was sort of a frivolous sort of thing. Now, obviously it's so romantic, but the main experiment was a sentry box experiment. That's what makes him famous, and that's what proves the theory that he's trying to prove. The raw science of what he contributed are probably a lot more important than whether or not he st stood in a field and flew a kite. And when it comes right down to it, don't we need our kite stories? I think that helps, you know, it, it adds to our national psyche, it adds to the, the, our image of these individuals as being larger than life. I mean, only Franklin could withstand God's power of light. The truth about Franklin is that for as much as he wrote, there is still so much we don't know. The kite experiment is just one of the many secrets that Franklin took with him as he ended his fabled stroll down history's cobblestone path.